Hello. <clears throat> How we doing, everybody? I am very excited to be here. Um, I had a bit of a long day today. Um, nothing crazy happened at work, but I just wasn't like super stoked about it today. Um, so I'm really happy to be here doing something very relaxing with you folks. Let me know how your day was. Um, so, last time we were here, we were looking for a Dunsparce, and be happy that I saved you the trouble of us trying to find our Dunsparce named Margot over here. Um, ugh, I love her. Um, she only knows Rage. Rage is a lot better in Generation 2, by the way. And, since Dunsparce is a normal type Pokemon, it will have the same type attack bonus. And if you guys are just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I missed him catching a Dunsparce. I wish I would have seen that. It was a lot of this. <laughs> it was just a lot of that running into Geodudes and running into Zubats and just not finding a Dunsparce. Um, but uh, now I'm finally going to fight this last trainer. And... After the last stream, we really caught a lot of Pokemon. I wasn't really sure what we were going to do. I didn't, like, go in with much of a plan other than starting with our boy Sinaiquil here. Um, but now I kind of have a roadmap of what I want our team to look like. Um, there's a lot of kind of, like, new things in Generation 2 that I want to show off. Some kind of some cool things to spotlight in the uh, Johto games specifically, um, that I think will be really cool, and I specifically want to use Dunsparce, because who uses Dunsparce? Nobody, but I love them, so I'm going to use them. Um, so yeah, we have Rage here, and it does a pretty decent amount, but if, yes, we get hit with a Tackle, our Rage is building, you'll notice it should do more damage now, it might even knock it out. Um, there you go. So, Dunsparce... Um, definitely, at least in the early game here, can really get on a roll. Um, it could even get to the point where, yes, if these Caterpie hit us enough, um, we can, uh, start one-shotting, one which we did, which is awesome. Um, so our girl Margo is also already proving great. Um, and we've got Weedle here. Um, and something you'll hear me say a lot is... Ah, uh, we're poisoned. But that's okay. This battle shouldn't last too much longer with our powered-up rage. With the rage inside of her. Margo's full of rage. Um... Like most women rightfully are. Um... But, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah. Um, talking about integration with Generation 1. As you can see, this person has Caterpies and Weedles, which are Pokemon that we saw in Pokemon Yellow. Um, hooray, beat Bugcatcher Wade. He gave us 32 measly dollars. Um, so here, we'll walk back. That's annoying poison animation. Give our squad a little heal up here. There we go. We have a full squad of six right now. We're probably not really going to use them all. Um, so right now we have on the squad, we have Margo, my girl, the Dunsparce at level five. We have Madam Web, the Spinnerack. Um, I was saying how we haven't seen that many of the Johto bugs yet, but Spinnerack is one of the new bug Pokemon they introduce in this game. Um, another one you can only catch during the day. I think even only during the morning. Um, so we'll see one of those later, um, but not tonight, of course, because as you can see in the game, it's already dark. It's daylight savings time now, so uh, where I am, it's still light outside, which I like. Uh, I caught my wife uh, <laughs> an, an honorary catch for my wife. We're probably not going to use her because uh, we just used uh, Bellsprout on the last uh, run through with yellow. And then Rocky. Uh, we have our trade Onyx here. Oh, and then Korra, the Zubat. Um, and then finally, Sinaiquil, the Sinduquil, which I love. Um, but, 
a fun little bit of game design here. Um, this gym leader, Falconer, he trains flying type Pokemon. And we can go down here, and this is a place, this place is called the Ruins of Alf. And it's very mysterious. We might have a look there soon. As a matter of fact, I think we will. I want to show that off to you before we go to Sprout Tower, which I'm excited about. We'll probably do a lot of that tonight. Um, so we have this guy here. He says, wait, what's the hurry? Have you gone to the Pokemon Gym? You can test your Pokemon and yourself there. So basically, we have to beat the Pokemon Gym before we can continue. And we have no way to catch an Onix. But... Mysterious music here. So the Ruins of Alf. Visitors welcome. So here we're going to find... Oh, not yet. Very mysterious. Um, so here we're going to find these... We can't go down there yet. These little rooms where you can do a puzzle. And when you do the puzzle, um, it will unlock unknown. There's also these little things back here where you can find items. Um, it says escape in unknown language. The unknown are those little like, you know, those little letter things from the intro of this game. And they're very mysterious. No one really knows what their deal is. There, if we use an escape rope, which we don't have one, but if we use one, um, a door will unlock back there. Maybe we'll do that at some point. But do I go here? Yes, I do. Um, so we have this little puzzle that we put together. It is of a Pokemon. You can kind of see the uh, outlines here. And this one is one of the earlier ones. I kind of have this one memorized, I think. Um, if you remember from our yellow playthrough, we um, resurrected the fossil of Aerodactyl. Um, and this Pokemon that we see here in this kind of like cave painting type of thing, is Kabuto, which is, um, so Aerodactyl comes from the old amber, but Kabuto comes from the dome fossil. And here, as you can see, Kabuto is kind of simple because you can really get a nice like outline of it. Um, and here we see Pokemon. So that's what we would have resurrected with our dome fossil, but we never did in our yellow playthrough. But, what's up? Huh! I fell. There's a strange presence here. Very mysterious. Um, we had someone in the chat last stream kind of talking about, like, a mysterious excavation in a commercial. Um, and that's kind of what this area is. So, as you can see, we have run into an unknown. This is an unknown J. Um, we are not going to use an unknown on our playthrough because they can only use one move, and that move is Hidden Power. And Hidden Power, here's an unknown A. Very cute. Um, and that move is, um, every Pokemon that uses it, it is actually a different type for that Pokemon. So it just really depends on what type it is. So I just wanted to show you that little puzzle, show you the Ruins of Alf, Alf a little bit. There are more puzzles that you can kind of go through throughout the game. Uh, we might go back there with an escape rope later. Um, and Unknown is a pretty weak um, psychic type Pokemon. And it's just not very useful in a playthrough. It's kind of more of like a, kind of more like a gimmick. Um, and this is the northern entrance to the Ruins of Alf, by the way. So when we try to go over here, there's this thing. What the frick is this thing? It just wiggles. It's a wiggly tree. Mysterious. So there's not really anything to do about that right now. Um, so that is why we are locked into Violet City. And to kind of circle back to um, the Onyx trade, you can catch Bellsprout right outside of Violet City. And this is actually the Sprout Tower, the next place we're going to go. Um, excuse me. Um, we'll let Ma uh, not yet. We'll keep Margo in the front for now. Uh, but we'll let Madam Webb get a few levels. Um, you're locked into Violet City.
Yeah. And one of the reasons they call this tower Sprout Tower is you can kind of see in the middle, like the base of it is <laughs> great dance. Thank you so much. Um, I worked a lot on it, I practiced. Um, you can see the middle of the tower is kind of swaying, kind of like a bell sprout, kind of like live and, and kind of swaying back and forth, um, which is why they call it Sprout Tower. Mm. They do kind of look like Voldemort. They are sages. They're like old, bald men. They're kind of like monks. But the uh, overworld sprite certainly looks like uh, Voldemort. I agree. Um, but... Oh, uh, what was I saying? We're gonna fight this guy. Because we have trainers up here, and there is a nice boss trainer up at the top. And all of these guys use Bellsprout. And what happened was, you have those Bellsprout available right outside the city. And it's like, okay, we can catch Bellsprout, but that's not very useful against a flying type gym leader. But the game is just like, okay, player, if you are curious and you look around town, you will find this very useful trade because Onyx is a very good matchup against uh, the flying type Pokemon in the gym. Um, which again, I say it all the time. Love a good little bit of game design. And that's not like anything insane or like super groundbreaking or crazy, but it's really nice. Um, and our girl Margo is really getting some levels here, especially with Rage. Yeah, see, now with our attack raise from Rage, the next one's going to knock out the third Bellsprout. Spoiler alert, the guy has three Bellsprout. So a lot of these sages use Bellsprout because they are kind of like a sacred Pokemon in this world, in this game. At least to these monks. Um, which is very cool and very interesting. Good little piece of lore. And again, this is one of my favorite cities in the game. Um, I expressed that in the last live stream. Um, because you have this really cool little lore. It's got a nice layout. I really like the gym leader, Falconer, that you fight. Um, it's really cool. Um, ooh, so we gotta fight this guy. We stand guard in this tower. Here we express our gratitude to honor all Pokemon. Um, love it. Yeah, and kind of one thing that they try to focus on kind of lightly in Pokemon Yellow is kind of more like tech, kind of more like advancement, the cities are bigger, but one thing in Johto they try to express is that things are just a bit more traditional. Thing, I'm going to speed through this a little bit because our poison sting isn't going to be doing a lot of damage, but luckily Vine Whip is double resisted by Madam Web, who is a poison bug type. Um, but things in Johto are a bit more traditional, um, a bit more one with nature, a bit more... Um, like an ode to the past. Um, and I find that vibe very cozy and delightful. Um, sorry. <laughs> Madam Web is just poison stinging through this. Okay, great. Nice to get her up a couple levels. Ooh, learn Scary Face. That is a new move. Um... A new move to Generation 2, it allows you to um, lower the speed harshly of your opponent, which is actually a very good uh, move for Madam Web, because, wow, we have a, some good resistances to these Bellsprout here. We're just smoking them. Um, but that move's very good for Spinarak, because... Spinarak's a very slow Pokemon, so if you can lower the speed of the other Pokemon, you have a way better chance of hitting first. Sinaiquil should learn his first Fire-type move here pretty soon. I believe it might be a level 9. If I am not mistaken. I very well could be, though. Alright, so up here's an item. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that kind of looks similar to Generation 1, but everything looks way better, which I love. 
Um, here, we're going to kind of start with Rocky. Just to get him a little bit of experience. Um, because we will want to use Rocky for the gym. But the only thing we're going to need to be careful of is that just one of these Vine Whip can knock out our Onyx. Um, so we're probably just going to swap right into Margo. Um, and get some rages going. And I'll probably let Margo take this guy out by herself. Because again, once she, once she gets rolling on her rage, she is unstoppable. There, you see Rocky. It says he gained a boosted 40 experience points. So... That's something that I expressed, um, is that when you get a traded Pokemon, um, it can gain experience faster. And that is great. But one problem is that you need to defeat gym leaders for traded Pokemon to obey you up to a certain level. And even after you defeat uh, Falconer, the first gym leader, um, it's very likely that your Onyx is going to grow to a level where he's no longer going to listen to you. Um, especially if he's gaining experience um, quicker than other Pokemon. Um, but for the gym, he's going to prove a very useful brick wall for us. Um, excuse me. So I'm always burping on these streams because I always got to have my little... My little seltzer with me. Um, all right, so we got a couple more fights here. We'll battle these sages kind of quickly. Okay, so all of those guys just had three bell sprout, nothing crazy, but these have a little bit stronger bell sprout. And even since that one used a growth and raised its special attack, um, it's still not doing anything to Madam Web because again, bug resist grass and poison resist grass, so that's a double resistance to Bellsprout's uh, grass type Vine Whip. Um, so Madam Web is just going to win this battle of attrition just about every time. Um, there we go, level well, seven. Let's see it. Ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da. Oh, and I should mention in Generation One you only had one singular special stat. Um, because in Generation 1, you had HP, Attack, Defense, Speed, and Special. And that encompassed Special Attack and Special Defense. However, in this game, you actually have two separate special stats. You have a Special Attack and Special Defense stat. Um, and one of the main... Uh, Pokemon that that kind of hinders is Gyarados, our boy Keith Angel from the Yellow playthrough. Um, if you were with us, um, because in Pokemon Yellow, Gyarados has a high special stat. However, um, in future games, they decided to lower Gyarados' special attack stat in favor of a higher physical attack stat, um, for whatever reason. And then there are a lot of different game mechanics that come later called, like, the physical and special split, um, which I can explain. I mean, I might as well. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'm playing a Pokemon game. Did we learn Ember? We did not. I wanted to. Um, but uh, in the Generation 4 games, there happened something called the physical and special split and what that did was it made moves either a physical attack or a special attack based on the move itself because originally in these games a move is a special attack or a physical attack based on its type so for example um there is a move called bite in this game. And in Generation 1, it was a normal move, but in Generation 2, it is actually a dark type move, which is a new type, which is super sick. But the dark type in this game is a, uh, a special um, type. 
So, any dark type move you use is actually a special attack. But, when you consider the fact that um, you're biting something, that's like a physical move, then why is it a special attack? You see what I mean? Um, but in later generations, they made Bite a physical dark move, so they were able to kind of separate those things and make it make more sense in that way. Um, let's go... we'll go into Sinaiquil. I'm kind of... Korra's kind of fighting above her weight class right there. Uh, kind of speed through this. This Bellsprout can't really hurt our Sinaiquil. The Bellsprout only knows Vine Whip and Growth, by the way. And since the Nyquil is fire type, there we go, Rocky. Um, not gonna do much. Oh, he's got another. He's got another Pokemon. Okay, Hoot Hoot. Um, so this will kind of be a good indicator of why we love to see Onyx in this town, because this Hoot Hoot, it can use Growl all at once and lower our attack. Uh, Screech actually harshly lowers his defense, which means it lowers his defense two stages, which is actually really good. But it keeps missing, which I hate. Uh, there we go. Um, and Foresight is an interesting move, because as you can see, this Hoot Hoot just doesn't have anything to hit us with, which is why it's great to have an Onyx this early in the game. Um, <clears throat> if this Onyx learned Rock moves a little earlier, um, that would be really great. But as it stands, he, um, Rocky's still going to serve as a really good defensive wall um, against the Gym Leader Falconer. Oh, we missed Tackle. Come on. Come on! There we go. There we go. There's that boosted experience once again. Sage Troy. Yes, your trust is real. Thanks, Sage Troy. So, ooh, what's going on up there? Ah, PP. You are indeed skilled as a trainer. As promised, here is your HM. HMs are back. But let me say this. You should treat your Pokemon better. The way you battle is far too harsh. Pokemon are not tools of war. Um, here, he claims to be the Elder, but he's weak. It stands to reason I'd never lose to fools who battle about being nice to Pokemon. <laughs> I only care about strong Pokemon that can win. Um, so kind of what they do in this game is, in the first game, your rival is just kind of like a D-bag. He's not like, ooh, Ghastly, hello. Um, we have no way to evolve our friend Ghastly here into Gengar, so we're not going to catch one this run through. And also, Gengar is so, so strong that sometimes I don't want to use, like, the strongest Pokemon in the game. It can get a little, a little bit, uh... A little bit too easy. Um, so basically this is like the Elder, and he can give us an HM. Let's let's eat a few potions here. Give one to Margo as well. There we go. I think we'll start with Sinaiquil here. Oh yes, I was saying about the rival. Um, in the first game, they made the rival just kind of like, you know, he's not nice, he's rude, he's like, whatever, dude. <laughs> um, and he's kind of like a mean rival, but they just make this rival like a straight up fugitive and just a really mean person, like a, like a criminal. <laughs> um, so here, did I save? I think I did. I'm gonna save again. All right, bro. So good of you to have come here. Sprout Tower is a place of training. People in Pokemon test their bonds to build a bright future together. Oh, how sweet. I am the final test. Allow me to check the ties between your Pokemon and you. I love that little Pokeball thing that shows up. That is delightful. Um, they actually remade the Generation 2 games. Um, uh, man, that would have been in like 2000. 2007 to 9-ish, I forget when. I mean, it was in Generation 4 is when they remade them. Um, but in those games, they made like, you know, kind of like the swaying 
uh, beam in the center that I pointed out, they made that like cut through the middle of the screen rather than kind of like cut off and you just imagine that it's there like it is now, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it makes the elder, the battle with the elder like weirdly off to the side in a way that I really hate. Um, but I love just kind of like his little battle arena. He has like that little portrait um, of Bellsprout behind him. And there's some really cool things in Generation 1 that create a really cool vibe. But as you get further into the franchise, you really start to get like, like way better production value, basically. Um, and this is kind of the first game you see that jump. Um, yeah, I just wanted to split the experience a little bit. Let Madam Web have a have a taste. Um, so we have another Bell Sprout. We will let Margo take care of this, and hopefully get a. We have Sage Lee here, or Sage Lee, if you are the the. It's kind of like uh, you kind of, the Japanese like R sound is like a mix between an L and a D. It's kind of hard to do. Um, so in Japanese, it would probably be pronounced that way. Um, we kind of got a little speed tie going. All right, yeah, use the growth. So that's doing more damage, but our girl Margo is is tanky. She's a, she's a powerful animal. Um, mm, love Dunsparce. I am hoping that I create like a new generation of Dunsparce appreciators. Um, uh, we're going to stay in on his Hoot Hoot, which is his ace. Um, which is a very kind of controversial thing. Not controversial that he has a Hoot Hoot. But uh, a very a trainer that we're going to battle soon very notably does not have a Hoot Hoot, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and that's like one of the main criticisms of this game, honestly. And I agree with it, but I still love it. Adore it to death. Um, Hoot Hoot just used a new move called Foresight. Uh, Margo gained 123. Nice. She growing. Ah, excellent. Um, Foresight is a move, what almost you say? You and your Pokemon should have no problem using this move. Take this Flash HM! Thank you. Um, Flash will be useful later in the game just because every cave that is dark is pitch black. You can't see anything. Um, but to use it out of battle, you need the badge from Violet's Gym. What does he say? I hope you learn and grow from your journey. Thanks, dog. Um, so what I was saying about Foresight, that is a new move. It's very kind of like situational in that it lets you hit ghost Pokemon with normal moves, normal and fighting moves. Because normally you can't hit ghost Pokemon with normal and fighting moves. But if you use Foresight first, it's like a way that you kind of like am able to see the ghosts. It's like special eye vision, kind of. Um, and Hoot Hoot has like good night vision, so it like learns it. It's pretty cool. Um, there are like a couple fighting Pokemon that learn it and, you know, can really take advantage of it. So they can punch those ghosts. I've always wanted to punch a ghost. Too spooky. Why are you so spooky? You need punched. You know? Um, Alright, so we're about a half an hour in here. Now we can probably get into the gym battle. Our levels are looking pretty solid uh, with the couple of Pokemon that we are uh, leveling up here. Um, we'll, get, we'll let Rocky get a fight coming up because this guy is kind of like famously tough. Because if you come in here and you have not gone to Sprout Tower yet, your levels can be at like level five. Um, and if you just charge in and fight this guy, he has a Spearow. Oh, I love the way they move. Uh, he has a Spearow at level nine. And it's so weird, but like the peck from a level nine Spearow, when your whole team is like level five, and you maybe have, uh, you know, bug-type Pokemon in your squad, like we do, that level 9 peck is hitting pretty hard. Um, every time I play this game, this guy can be 
can be tough. Because, you know, I don't use the Onyx every time. I just wanted to show that off for you guys. But, um... I, I don't think we're going to have trouble with the gym leader here. We're going to speed through this just a hair. There we go. Whew! Late. Oh, yeah, and you have that new little bar across the bottom that shows you how far along the level you are, which was a wonderful addition. Um, I don't think we're going to have much trouble. Oh, yeah, the, got the gym music. The gym music is roughly the same as it is in Gen 1. It's just kind of a bit more, like, aggro. Because um, Gen 1 is more like... Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, the vibe is just way mellower. Um, so here, this guy's got a couple of Pidgey, I believe. And Pidgey, by this point in the game, has, not, has no flying moves. Um... So we can use our Spinarak here and not fear from the super effective damage like we feared from the Spiro. Um, uh, using Poison Sting is always frustrating because you're always just kind of waiting for it to poison because it has a high chance to do it. There we go. We maybe only have another move. Oh, definitely only have another move with Madam Web. Madam Web's weak like the film. I actually haven't seen the movie. Um, if anyone's seen the movie, let me know. I've heard it's terrible. It didn't look very good, but you know, you never know. Let's go into Sinaiqua here. There we go. But yes, as I was saying, I don't think we're gonna have much trouble with Falconer here because something that you'll see in this game and I'm going to try not to over-level very much because I really enjoyed going through Pokemon Yellow at, like, kind of a lower level. It really made the game a bit more challenging for me. You know, someone who's played the game a million times. Um, and, you know, it can... When you build, like, a strong team like I did, um, going in a bit under-leveled can definitely make the game a bit more fun. But in the Johto region here, you'll... Notice that the level curve is a little bit differently. Because, um, like, for example, Brock, his Pokemon in Pokemon Yellow, I believe, are at level 10 and level 12. Um, but the Pokemon here are at level 7 and level 9 for Falconer, the gym leader. And you'll definitely notice, as we go, the levels definitely trend lower um, in the Johto games than they do in the Kanto games. And that just kind of has to do with, like, the way the stat, or the experience is just kind of, like, spread out, you know. Um, it's nothing crazy. Ba, 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 ba. Perfecto. Um, something I'm going to do, and this can be very useful to have extra Pokemon on your team that you're not really even using. I'm going to deposit Core of the Zubat for now, because I don't think we're going to use Zubat in our playthrough. Um, Alright. Because we're going to pick something else up later. Um... But yeah, the way the experience is kind of spread out in this game is just a bit different than Yellow, um, so the levels end up being lower. Look at this guy! Look at his emo hair! I love him! I bet Falconer listens to uh, Fall Out Boy. Or My Chemical Romance. Or like, Taking Back Sunday. Or what other kind of emo type bands. I don't want to say Paramore, they kind of were. Ooh, there's a new kind of like metal emo band I love called As Everything Unfolds. They're from England. Um, I think they're from England. They're from Europe, anyway. And they kind of have like Paramore meets metal vibes. Very emotional, very... in a way that I love. Um, so anyway, this is Falconer. He is a flying-type gym leader. We are going to start... Uh, we'll start with Madam Web. 
Because again, Pidgey don't know no flying moves. However, he does have a very nice counter for Onix. So we'll see how we do. We should be fine, but you never know. Um, I'll show you the real power of the magnificent bird Pokemon. Had to get a little dance in. I probably won't dance every time like Gen 1 because while I do like this gym leader theme, it does not hold a candle to the Generation 1 gym leader theme. That's the best one. It's the best one. Um, Pidgey is faster and stronger than Madam Web, however. Ah, we do get the first turn poison, which is very uh, fortuitous. Oh, this is weird. String Shot and Scary Face, both lower speed. It's pretty redundant, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, this Pidgey's not going to do a, a whole lot more than tackle us. Um, but he might use a move. Um, Falconer gives out a TM. And it is for a move called Mud Slap. Um, and we're not seeing Pidgey use it, but we'll probably see Pidgeotto use it. It is a ground-type move. And ground-type moves are super effective against um, rock-types, which is which, which is what makes it a pretty good counter to the Onyx you can get. Um, but if you remember from Generation 1, there was Sand Attack, which was very annoying um, because... Oh, there we go, Dunsparce. Um, Madam Web, that poison, love it. So now Falconer has a Pidgeotto. He has a Pidgey and a Pidgeotto. His team's kind of redundant. He should have a Hoot Hoot because it's like the new Pokemon. You would think they would want to showcase that, but again, it really kind of shows the integration of Gen 1 and the whole thing with the new Johto Gym Leaders is that they are the types that the Gen 1 leaders are not. So kind of in your brain, canonically, you're like, okay, they're using the Gen 1 Pokemon that the Kanto Gym leaders aren't. You know what I mean? I don't really love it, but I think that was kind of like the design philosophy there. Um, but anyway, for Pidgeotto, um, what I want to do, we can go straight into Rocky here, because even if Pidgeotto knocks out our friend Rocky, we have Plenty of backup, and I also think I want to use a couple screeches. Here we see Mud Slap. Um, Sand Attack is a very annoying move in Generation 1, and it can lower your accuracy, much like Mud Slap just did. Mud Slap, ooh, this is not good. There we go. Uh, Mud Slap is not a very powerful move, and it only has like 20 base power, but being able to attack and lower accuracy is a pretty strong move at this point in the game. I'm at, we're actually very lucky we were able to get that tackle off. Um, and that is okay. I feel pretty good about that. Um, I think if we bring in our girl Margo, we should be able to rage this Pidgeotto. Um, especially with the defense drop that we put on him. Oh yeah. Guys, Dunsparce is a tank! Come on! It's amazing. I love Dunsparce. Um... And I talked about it last stream, but I was really happy to see Dunsparce get an evolution in Generation 9. Even if it was, like, basically a troll job by the Pokemon Company. But Margo, easy, easy fight with a Dunsparce on the squad. Come on. Didn't even need to use Cyndaquil. There goes Pidgeotto. Level 10. ba 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 ba, -ba. Let's see. Darn, my dad's cherished bird Pokemon. Alright, take this. It's the official Pokemon League Zephyr badge. And also, fun fact, this is my favorite badge from this game. It looks so cool. It has such a sick name. Um, and I'll have to show it to you later because, like, the trainer page is different. It's cool. Raises the attack power of Pokemon. It also... Attack power! <laughs> it also enables Pokemon to use Flash. Okay, so if we find a Dark Cave here, take this too. We receive TM31. And this is... Mud Slap. Which could be very useful for us later. Probably won't teach it yet. Um, 
It's both defensive and offensive. Very cool. It's a very cool, like, first TM to get um, in this game. Because it really kind of teaches you about utility. What does he say after you beat him? There are Pokemon gyms and cities and towns ahead. You should test your skill with these. Ah. Gonna be the greatest bird master. You go, Falconer. You do it, man. I hope you do it. Oh, yes, we get a call from Professor Elm. What does he say? Hello! We, uh, oh, yes, learn something about the egg. My assistant is at the Pokemon Center in Violet City. Okay. So we gotta talk to this homeboy. And this is why we deposited Cora the Zubat, because this guy gives you the Pokemon egg. Did you take this Pokemon egg? Absolutely. Um, so... The way that eggs hatch in this game is that they tell you just like, oh yeah, uh, for an egg to hatch, it has to be with other Pokemon. And really all that's saying is, for an egg to hatch, you just have to walk a certain amount of steps with it in your party. Um, so we could, in theory, hatch our egg very quickly, literally just going like this, walking up and down town. If we just walk up and down town like this, we can hatch our egg very quickly. Like, let's see what it says. When we check the status of our egg, it just says it moves around inside sometimes. It must be close to hatching. Ooh, how about that? Um, but if we move around a couple more, that flavor text will actually change a little. Let's see if it changes now. Okay. Well, let me just kind of walk over here. I need to go to the mart anyway. Buy a few more Pokeballs. A few more potions. I would love to buy an extra escape rope here. Because we're about to use one, actually. Um, I actually don't remember if I healed the squad after the gym leader. I did. Great. Um, we'll get Sinaiquil up in the front. We might use Mud Slap on... Like Margo, maybe Rocky. Um, because it's nice to have um one a ground move and two that accuracy drop is always nice. Um so we got a couple Pokemon that can learn it. Um <laughs> You know, I'll go ahead and teach it to Sinaiquil. Um or let me see. Yeah, I'll go ahead and teach it to Sinaiquil. Uh, because we already know Smokescreen, and Mudslap is like Super Smokescreen, because it can um, lower accuracy, which is what Smokescreen does, but also do damage. So if we move around a little more here, I want to show you how the text on the egg can change. Um, hold on. Let's do this first. Because if we go over here, we don't want to run down the hole again. But if we do this, let me save the game real quick. In the ruins of Alf. In, in all honesty, I don't do stuff in the ruins of Alf too terribly much um, when I do my playthroughs. But it's it's always cool that it's there. It's kind of like an option. It's a really optional area. You don't have to do it. Um, but again, it's that cool little bit of lore. So if I use my escape rope here, where it says escape. What should happen... Yes. Very cool. Um, oh, go this way. This guy says, Ah, here's another huge hole. It's big enough to go through. Here I go. And there's some cool items in here. Um, we got a berry. Love it. Um, I don't remember what's in here. A poison cure berry. Lovely. Um... An energy powder. That's very nice. Um, I forget what an energy powder does. Um, oh, it just restores 50 HP. Ah, it's bitter. And that is something to keep an eye on. Um, because a heal powder. I think this is also bitter. Um, yes, it is. Okay, and it cures all status problems. So, um, ooh, what does it say? Our words shall, our worlds shall remain here 
for the ages. Our word shall remain here for the ages. That's sick. Like, this place is super cool. And you don't have to do it at all. Um, our words will remain here through the ages. Ah, so sick. Um, but something that you'll encounter is friendship. And some Pokemon actually evolve through friendship. Um, and again, friendship kind of works a little bit like hatching eggs, is that you can gain friendship through steps with them in your party, but you also don't want to let them faint. Um, you also don't want to give them bitter um, uh, potions like that. But if you're using it on a Pokemon that's not trying to increase its friendship, that's a-okay. Still heals just fine. Um, oh yeah, this guy. Uh, this was the guy who stopped us earlier. You have some good Pokemon there. It must be from the training you gave him around Violet City. The training at the gym must have been especially helpful because I told you to do it. Uh, as a souvenir, take this. Um, it increases the power of Grass-type moves. So yeah, I talked about berries a little bit um, in the last uh, stream and how they come into effect once you meet a certain threshold, like have your HP go below half or get poison. But this game introduced hold items in general, which a berry is a hold item, but so is a Miracle Seed. You can give this to a Pokemon, and it will increase the power of their Grass-type moves. Um, so it's great for a Grass-type Pokemon. We're not really using Wife, but I'll go ahead and give the Miracle Seed to my Wife, because she's very special to me. <laughs> and I want to hatch this egg. So we're just going back and forth between Violet City and Route 32. Because I want to show you what's in this egg. Because if we look here... Ah. Well, we'll just have to see. I'll keep moving around. We don't have to wait forever to hatch the egg. It should hatch fairly soon. Um, so now we'll just kind of keep going on our journey. Um, we have our girl Hoot Hoot here. Um, we've seen a Hoot Hoot already. That's a cut tree, like we experienced in Generation 1. We can't cut it down yet, so we can't talk to that guy that's up there. Um, we'll battle this fella. Um, we're probably getting pretty close to a natural stopping point here. But, uh, we'll fight this fella. And he's just got a rat attack. Just your normal Rattata guy. We'll use our newly learned Mud Slap. Um. Ooh, very nice tackle. And a miss. Love to see it. Um. But, um, there are more, there's another egg that you can get in this game. And I'm excited to see what that hatches into. The egg that you get here in Violet City is always the same. Um, ba, 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 ba. We'll go into Rocky for this Zubat. Might start using Supersonic trying to confuse us. Ah, this is interesting. Uh, I talked about the friendship mechanic earlier. Zubat is actually a Pokemon um, that gains a new evolution in this game. So... In the Pokemon Yellow, Zubat evolved into Golbat, and that was it. But in this game, Golbat evolves into something. But it evolves into Golbat through friendship. Friendship's very powerful. There are many uh, beautiful pieces of media that uh, really revolve around the power of friendship. <laughs> um, but uh, really, there is another Pokemon I want to use for the squad that evolves via friendship. So, I didn't want to have two on the team. Because um, that can be kind of cumbersome, because as you play through the game, it takes kind of a long time for a Pokemon's friendship to get high enough to where it will finally evolve. Um, so I didn't want to have two on the squad. That's why I decided not to show you Zubat's new evolution. And we'll see. We'll see it as we play the game. But... Um, ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da. So as we keep going down this route here, I'm just going to keep taking extra, some extra steps to see if we can hatch our egg a little early because 
as we wind down our stream here, I think I would like to see the A hash. Um, and I want to show you this different flavor text. Uh, it still just says it moves around inside sometimes. It must be close to hashing. Um, but something that happens later in the game is that you get an egg that can be a random Pokemon. Um, it can be, you know, one of several. But this egg that you get from Violet City, the first one, is always going to be the same Pokemon. Um, and it's funny, as the years have gone on, uh, this Pokemon that you get from the egg, it actually has become one of the most powerful Pokemon in existence. It's kind of gained new powers and new moves and another evolution even. Um, that's something that you know, as you go through the Pokemon games, you'll see a lot of Pokemon that maybe seemed a little bit weak in the generation that they were introduced. They will get a new evolution in a later one, much like Dunsparce did. Um, I'm still waiting us for us, on us to learn Ember here. Um, but, uh, to no avail. But, what I was saying is, the Pokemon that you get from the egg... Um, it's a good Pokemon. It's definitely, like, a good, usable Pokemon in this game. Um, but in later generations, it becomes great. Um, so we'll keep walking. We'll keep making our way down the route here. I'm gonna skip some of these trainers for now, because there's a Pokemon Center kind of, like, right down where we're heading. And I can always come back to them once I can heal. Um, this item's actually a great ball, I recall. Which is great. Ba, 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 ba. Um, so this time of night, or I mean, not this time of night, during the night time in this game, um, you can catch a Pokemon called Wooper that I really love and that is a really kind of like beloved Pokemon in the fan base. Um, we're probably not going to use one on this playthrough because I have, um, kind of a different idea for a Water-type Pokemon that I want to show off to you. So here's our, here's our little girl Wooper here. Um, we, I might catch her just for fun. Ooh, don't hit me. Okay, it did. Poopy. Water gun will hurt my Cyndaquil a little bit, but I'm going to use Mud Slap. Ah, that lowered accuracy paid off. So, Wooper is a great Generation 2 Pokemon. It's a water and ground type, which is pretty useful. But, it's pretty easy to find and catch on this route if you're here at night. I say that, and it busts out of my Pokeball. Um, but there are some other Water-type Pokémon that are a little more rare that I think will be a cool thing for me to show off in this playthrough. So we'll catch this here, Wooper. Um, the Waterfish Pokémon. Um, yep, we'll just name her... Uh, let's see... Just Woop. See you, Woop. You get to live in my in my computer forever. Isn't that great? Um, if we go on that bridge, there are some uh, fishermen we can fight, some water-type trainers, um, which will be lovely. So for this episode, uh, we're about to come up on this little Pokemon Center down here. Um, that's probably where we'll wind things down for tonight. We're coming up on our hour that we usually go with. Uh, Marco is just crazy strong, I'm telling you. Dunsparce, in this game specifically, is so good. Um, and super slept on. I want to use I want to use her the whole run. And just let the world know. Let the world know. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da. All right. So this guy is kind of a jerk. <laughs> How would you like to have this tasty, nutritious slowpoke tail? Uh, for you right now, it's a million dollars. How does that sound? Sound good to you? Um, you want this? No! You don't want it? Then scram, shoo! <laughs> it's 
that's a very funny interaction. Got another Great Ball, which we love to see. Another free Great Ball. Um, so let's pop into this Pokemon Center here. We will heal the squad. Oh, um, here is where we can get our first fishing rod, fishing returns in this game. Um, you can do it in the Kanto games. We didn't really use it. We actually bought our Magikarp from the, uh, the guy right outside of Mount Moon. Would you like one of my rods? Never say that. Never say yes to a stranger who asks you that. Um, now you're an angler too. Thanks, dude. This guy's wholesome. He's a good guy. Um, try out your rod. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, folks, I'm getting a little extra steps in to see what our egg can do. Um, there we go. It says it's making sounds inside. It's going to hatch soon. Um, so hold on. Maybe last thing we do, we'll try to hatch this egg. Um, because if we walk, if we walk enough steps, it'll do it. Um, and once you have walked enough steps, the game will literally stop you. It'll just be like, huh? And then you'll see it hatch. Um, and, uh, yes, fishing returns in this game. We may or may not be fishing for a new squad member later. We'll see how it goes. Um... Doesn't this sped up music sound great? It sounds perfect. Um, hold on. I'm determined. I am determined. Oh yes, and again, if you were curious what looking for and catching a Dunsparce looked like in Dark Cave, it looked a lot like this. It was very boring and not super fun to watch on stream. Um, but since we're so close to hatching this egg, I want to show it to you guys. Um, and again, the game will stop me when it does. There we go. We got it. Um, huh? <gasps> Togepi! Hooray! We will give a nickname to Togepi. Oh, he's a boy Togepi. Um, you know, I'm going to name him Volo. Any of you Pokemon Legends Arceus fans will know what that's all about. Um, so we have Togepi on the squad. Again, probably not gonna use Togepi, um, but it is a very cute, normal type Pokemon. It actually gains a different type in later generations when they introduce that type. Um, does not know an attacking move. Growl and Charm, neither one does damage. But Togepi is very cute. Um, that's basically a gift that you get every run through of Crystal. And I just wanted to show off the egg, egg hatching uh, mechanic to you guys. Uh, but with that, um, this has been a great stream. We got a lot done. Um, next stream, we'll probably go ahead and pop up and fight some of those trainers that we skipped. Um, and then we'll make our way to our next town and get our next gym badge. I am... So excited. I love this game. I don't know if I've said that before, uh, but I do. So thank you for joining me. If you're joining me on YouTube, thank you so much for watching that. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. Um, but with that, I will bid you all adieu for the evening. Um, have a good rest of your week. Um, I'm hoping it goes downhill from here <laughs> for me personally. Um, but thank you for tuning in. Great to see you. Peace out, folks.